to Jesus Christ. There are several times through the Gospels where Jesus clearly teaches us about the reality of hell. He also teaches us that it seems very easy for one to be admitted to hell, but likewise, that it is almost equally simple to live our lives pleasing to God and be granted entrance into heaven. Heaven and hell are described, and as we know, are an eternal state. They are eternal places, uh, and they, have, they, they, are, they exist forever, and it is where we will end up in either one of these. But hell is a place of punishment and torture, of unquenchable fire, of separation from God. Basically, hell is the complete opposite of heaven. And once one is admitted there, there is no possibility of escape or release to a less painful existence. We see this in today's parable where the rich man who finds himself in Hades, this is uh, really the uh, ancient understanding, the Greek understanding of hell uh, before Christ rises from the dead, um, but uh, so the different words pretty much mean the same thing. But he finds himself in Hades and is told that there is fixed a chasm, a great abyss, which separates his current place with the place of the living, the place of joy. Now this information is received and understood by the rich man. He accepts his fate. He accepts that what he has done has uh, awarded him this, uh, uh, this, this place, this state. He's okay with that. He's not happy about it, but he accepts it. And he, but, he, but he even laments his own state. And he is compassionate towards his brothers. He still has five brothers that are living. And he realizes that his own torture is so unbearable that the rich man does not wish this horrible existence to anybody. And he would want each person to avoid this at all costs. This is why the rich man says to Abraham, or asks Abraham to allow a messenger to go to his brothers. He has compassion on his family. He wants a messenger to go to them so that they will then be convinced, as he is now completely convinced, existing in this state. He's completely convinced of the reality of heaven and the reality of hell. And he is now convinced that the words that Moses and the prophets spoke and wrote are indeed absolutely true and should therefore be heeded. But this parable Jesus is teaching us is also about our fallen human nature. It is about our skepticism and, and also about our pride. Most people don't believe something until they themselves see or witness and experience. And to be honest, sometimes even after people do experience something, they still tend to not believe, as is highlighted at the end of this parable. This lesson, then, is about the quality of our personal faith and about how seriously we take the scriptures. It's a good question. Have we read and contemplated the scriptures? Have we prayed to God with our hearts? Do we believe in his absolute power? And most importantly, are we completely convinced that this faith is indeed the true faith and that the way of Jesus Christ is the key out of pain and into eternal rejoicing? Abraham said to the rich man, if they your brothers, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Again, what does it take to completely convince us about a truth? But more importantly, what does it take to convince us about the reality of heaven and hell? There are and have been through Catholic history 
many private revelations that saints have received and some seers. And, and they've received these revelations about the reality of heaven and hell, about the glories of heaven and about the terrible tortures that go on in hell. But if we do not read the word of God and have not taken it to heart, nor prayed out with our whole soul and with our whole mind, then we too may not be convinced. And we too may fall, the deepest fall. When we search the word of God, accept it into our hearts as simple children can, then act on those beliefs contained therein, then we will be convinced of the one who did rise from the dead, who did rise from Hades to tell and to teach the entire world that death is no longer permanent, but that everlasting life is available to those who believe in Jesus Christ. When we are completely convinced that Jesus Christ is not just some holy man, some sage, or that Catholicism is not just one possible world religion to help us, make feel, to help us feel better about ourselves, but that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, the creator of all that is, and that he has the power to save us from death and destruction when we follow his teaching and example, then we too will rise to paradise, and we will not be begging for one tiny droplet of water to cool the burning of our tongue. But we will be forever glorifying God and experiencing his divine love for all of eternity. Glory to Jesus Christ.